Hi, I'm Tim Carter, and you are watching the Ask the Builder live stream for November 16th, I believe. Yeah, 2021. Thanks so much for joining me. And today we're we're gonna have a little fun. Uh, I want to let you. I'm gonna talk for the first few minutes, probably 15 minutes or so, about um, uh, about energy saving payback periods, and then we're gonna go to you know, you can ask anything. We'll have an open mic, whatever. You know, you can ask me any question you want. But at first, please try to keep your questions to the topic that I'm talking about. Uh, that would really help us a whole lot. All right. And I want to thank today's sponsor. Of course, who else other than Stain Solver? So Stain Solver is a great product. My wife and I own the company. It's a certified organic oxygen bleach. It cleans anything that's water washable. Uh, that's all you need to know. Just go to stainsolver.com and click the videos tab and just watch all the videos about what Stainsolver does. It's really pretty amazing. Um, we've sold, I don't know how many pounds we've sold, but it's a lot. <laughs> tons and tons and tons and tons of this product over the years. Okay, here's what we're going to talk about. And remember, you can chat your question uh, <laughs> We're not in Kansas today. Um, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about energy savings payback. And what I mean by that is I, I tried to find one and in, in I collect these uh, newspapers, this really neat little newspaper here in New Hampshire called the Weir's Times. And I was looking through a past uh, a few past issues, but I couldn't find the ad I was looking for. And I know you've seen ads where it says, um, get these replacement windows and you'll save, I don't know, 30% on your energy bill or buy this water heater and you'll save 15% on your energy bills, um, whatever it might be. But you get the point. Um, in other words, you have to spend money to then save money. All right. All right. So now this doesn't really apply if your water heater just went bad and you have to get a water heater anyway or a new furnace or a boiler or whatever. But frequently you might think you might get, you might go to a home and garden show and, you know, they have some really professional salespeople at these events and they they use all types of psychology on you. Uh, there's a really great book you should read called Influence. That's the title, Influence. And the subtitle is The Psychology of Persuasion. So think about that influence, if you want to influence somebody, and if you want to persuade them to do something like persuade them to open their wallet and get money out. <laughs> All right. So it's by Robert Cialdini. Robert Cialdini. You should really read that book. Okay. So you're at the Home and Garden Show. Um, you go by the, the new vinyl window booth and you, you get sucked in uh, by the tractor beam <laughs> and and the salesman just starts spinning a, a, a web around you. All right. So, um, so here's what he says. They'll say, oh, if you buy these, these new vinyl windows, um, you're going to save 35% on your energy bills. And in fact, here's the proof. You know, and he holds up some bills from the local utility company with the name and address, you know, kind of blacked out, but it's an official bill. And, 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 you know, and, and, you know, it could be less money or no doubt it would be less money. Uh, but there's all kinds of factors involved because maybe maybe the 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 two winters ago, it was a really cold winter and the people used a lot of fuel. And maybe last winter where he's showing you all these savings, it, it was a mild winter. I mean, see, there's all kinds of very complex things that go into the calculation. All right. But let's start out with a really simple example. All right. Um, yes. Lennon, I did find out what Muddick is, just so you know. I, I looked into that. Um, very interesting. All right, so, but we'll talk about that later on. All right, so here's, here's I made some little uh, very crude um, slides for you, and I'll hold them up, and, and we'll, we'll get started. So here's the first one, um, and so I need some help, so I need to be able to see it. So the first thing to do to be able to, to uh, figure out what is going on is you need to calculate what your annual heating cost is. Let's say that this savings is for, you know, uh, you're going to put in 
you know, new vinyl windows, all right, or, or, or whatever, just insulation. How about, we'll just do insulation. So a salesman's trying to save more insulation, and he says you're going to save a lot of money. So the first thing you have to do is figure out how much are you spending a year in heating costs? Well, it's not always easy to do, but here's a really simple way. It's not completely accurate, but it gets you pretty close. If you heat your home with natural gas or propane, just get out your monthly bills and look at what you spend for gas, natural gas, you know, for, you know, June, July, and August, because your, your furnace is on and, you know, but you're still using gas for your water heater and maybe your stove. And you find out that you're spending, you know, $40 a month each month for June, July, and August. So let's just say, you know, your water heater and your stove, you're using $40 a month all year round. All right. So 40 times 12 is $480. So if your total gas bill for the entire year is, I'm just, I just made this number up, is 1,880, it means that you spend about $1,400 a year to heat your home. Okay, so that's that's the simple way, you know, how to just roughly figure out, you know, what, what you're spending a year to heat your home. Some utility companies um, have got, they actually, with these electric smart meters and some of these smart metering devices, they can actually tell you very closely what you're spending a year to heat your home. You know, people uh, like me, I use propane, and I'm in the same situation, but I, I pretty much know I can get really close as to what I'm spending a year on to heat my home because I can see how little propane I use throughout the summer, you know, the late spring, all summer long, and early fall when, when my boiler is not on to heat the house. All right. So uh, those of you who use electric, um, it's a little bit more complicated. You have to, if you have electric only, then you have to look at periods of time when you're not heating and when you don't have your air conditioning on to kind of get an average cost of what kind of electric you're using, um, you know, through, you know, through the, um, uh, the year on a monthly basis. And then you have to start to look at what are you spending to heat your home, you know, your heat pump, you know, from October, you know, through April. All right. So, it, you, you're, you're pretty smart. You can figure this out. You can get close. All right. So now what's the next step? All right. So the next step, it's really simple math. You know this from grade school. You actually, whatever the, the salesman says, um, he says, oh, you're going to save 25% if on your utility bill if you put this insulation in. All right. So 25% times 1,400, if I did my math right, is... Uh, $350 a year. All right. You got that? So if you if you're spending $1,400 a year to heat your home, now let's forget about insulation and air conditioning, all that. We're just going to do a really simple calculation. So $350, you know, um, is all you're going to save a year in your fuel. If if he's right, if you really do save 25%. All right, now what? So now let's figure out. How long does it take to break even? Because in other words, think about this. You're going to write a check for $2,000, you know, and you're going to get this insulation in. And at this point, you're out 2000 bucks. I mean, you know, yeah, you've got more insulation in, but you're you're $2,000 poor. You know, you don't have that $2,000 you had an hour before. All right. So now what happens? All right. So you calculate the break even point. Now, don't, this is a really crude calculation, okay? Um, and I'll discuss why in just a moment. So you you take the two thousand dollars, you divide it by three hundred and fifty dollars a year, and it takes five point seven one four years, five point seven one four years, for you to roughly break even. All right, so that's a long time. So imagine how long it would take you to break even if you spent, I don't know, ten thousand dollars. Um, on new windows, <laughs> you know, that that also only claimed a 25% energy savings. It would take a long time and it gets worse. All right. It gets worse. So remember, if you have any questions about this, feel free to put them in the comments. I'll, I'll answer them because uh, some people don't like to do math. I get it, uh, but it's really not that hard. And you can come back and watch this video again to look at my slides 
and it'll help you through the process. All right, how does it get worse? Well, and how does it get more complicated? Number one, sometimes you'll finance the improvement. All right, so if you finance it, that means you're going to pay interest and you have to add the total interest cost. You know, instead of it being $2,000 for the installation, with the interest, it might be, and I'm just making this number up, okay? Let's say that you pay it out over three years or whatever, and the number is $2,300. I'm just making it up, okay? So you have to then take the $2,300 and divide that by the three fifty, dollars and you'll find maybe it's now six years uh, it takes you to get to break even. So here's the point. Um, and, and then here, it even gets more complex, okay? So, you know, you could have, let's just say you, you didn't spend the $2,000 and you you just take the $2,000 and you invest it in some conservative stocks and bonds in the stock market, you know, in the equities market or whatever. And let's just say you, I don't know, you make um, 5 or 6% a year. All right, so... If you kept the two thousand dollars, you'd have twenty one hundred. Yeah, I know you got to pay taxes on it. Blah blah blah. Um, but but then you you have to also understand this. So um, this is the key point. Remember, they, they keep telling you at the booth and everywhere else that you're going to save money. All right, you're going to save money. You're going to save, 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 save. All right, no, 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 no. So you don't save any money. Until such time as the you get paid back in full in the energy savings, all of the money you spent for the improvement. So in other words, in our very crude example, you have to wait 5.7 years to get back your $2,000. Then the next few months, you'll start to save money. All right. So. Don't get full. Don't don't think of that savings number that 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 happens. You remember you're spending money to save money, and so you have to do all this math to find out when you actually start to break even. And it's an and it's an actually if you re, if a CPA was doing it, it would be a very complex, uh, very complex calculation. Believe me, because they're going to take into account inflation. They're going to take into account the interest rates. They're going to take into account if you would have kept the money and either a you know, got a worthless certificate of deposit, which you're just going backwards on uh, if you could have invested in the stock market. I mean, there's all kinds of things. Uh, and, th and then um, remember that, that $350 is a moving target uh, because either A, the fuel costs could go up or they could go down. I mean, so right now, unfortunately, this winter, um, a lot of people are going to be in a lot of pain because the fuel costs are going to go up to heat your home. It's horrible. Uh, right now, inflation is just raging, and energy prices are out of control. Uh, and and I'm not I'm not even going to go there why why they are. I'm not necessarily an expert, but I but I'm old enough to know what's really in play here. So that's the deal with energy savings. Don't be fooled by the salesperson into thinking that the next day you're going to be saving a bunch of money. And the final thing you have to put into the equation, and this is hard to do. I mean, it's hard to a degree. How long are you going to live in the house? Well, guess what? The If you go to the National Association of Realtors uh, and you look at the averages, they, they do all these calculations. A few years ago, the average length of time a person stayed in one house was about eight or nine years. All right. You know, in other words, um, a member of my family had lived in their home. They had built a home, gosh, back in the early 80s, it might have been. It might have been late 70s, built a little a three-bedroom home, lived in it for, geez, a long time, 30, 40 years. But then just, um, just a year ago, moved to a condo. All right, so you might get transferred. Um, you, Who knows what might happen? You, Any number of things could happen, and you need to sell your home. Well, if you're halfway through trying to get paid back on those windows you bought, don't think for a minute that you're going to get uh, penny for penny every penny you bought for those windows from the new buyer of your home. Yeah, I know housing prices are really going up right now and you, can, you, you made a lot of equity. Well, guess what? The house that you're going to buy also went up in value. So you're really not that much ahead because that house 
that you were thinking about buying in Southern California last year for 800,000, well, it's now 1.3 million. All right. So everything's going up. So don't, don't think you're sitting pretty just because you've made a lot of equity in your own home. Um, just, you know, I was a real estate broker for 20 years back in Ohio. So I know just a little bit about real estate, maybe just enough to be dangerous. Okay. Um, uh, Lennon, we're not going to, just so you know, I'm not, doesn't do any good to ask many questions about uh, our president or politics, because I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to answer any questions um, about those kind of things. I'm not going to go there in, in, in my live streams. It just, uh, everybody's too polarized right now, especially here in America, about politics. And 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 um, it's like winner take all. It's like the Game of Thrones. If, if you've not read the Game of Thrones book series, I highly recommend you do. I'm just about three hours worth of reading, finishing the la the fifth book in the series. It's absolutely fascinating. So anyway, um, so don't bother asking any questions about politics, or climate change. Uh, if you want to know about climate change, just go to my website. My, my college degree was in geology. So I know a little bit about climate change. And just go to askthebuilder.com and type climate change in the search engine get the answer to what um, to, to, to your question. Okay. Uh, if you have a question about energy payback, so let me know. All right. Uh, oh, Will, how's the house in uh, Mount Desert Island coming? So we'll talk a little bit about that. So that's my daughter's home Will's talking about. They started construction on it uh, three years ago. Actually, three years ago last month is when they were cutting the trees on the lot. And it's all finished. Um it took a lot longer to complete than it was supposed to. Um, I did all of the plumbing and the radiant heating and the electric in the house with the help of my son-in-law. You know, he luckily he had a great schedule. He, my son-in-law, um, you know, they lived up there. They lived in a, a rental house, and um, he works on Pacific time. All right, so he he's able to work from home, and uh, so he. He would his day at work would start at noon and he would work until like eight o'clock at night. All right. So we would get up and we'd be on the road at seven o'clock in the morning or six thirty. And he would work with me, you know, for four hours in the morning. And um, and then we would drive back to the house for lunch. And then I would drive back alone back to the job site and work in the afternoon by myself. All right. So anyway, the house came along great. Uh, it's beautiful. Um, it was uh, it was truly an experience. Um, and the, I, I'm, I'm happy to say the, um, I don't know, I, I know my daughter trusted me, but I don't think she really believed me about how quiet the plumbing would be. We used cast iron, no hub cast iron for all of the uh, drain pipes. And there are, there, there are, it's a major stack that comes down. You can actually see a photograph of it if you go to askthebuilder.com and you type in cast iron. Uh, you'll see this really cool photograph that I took of, um, once again, when I get the software that I'm going to learn how to use, I'll be able to pull up a picture and show you. All right. I'm sorry. We're, we can't do that today. Uh, but anyway, you'll see a photograph, of this big stack. It's got um, a three inch pipe that's going up to the um, hall bathroom. And it's got a uh, another stack that comes off of it. It's a four inch pipe, actually. And then the, it's a four by three Y and the one, the one Y, part of the Y goes up to, to a hall bath. Uh, the other one goes up and catches the master bath. It's really amazing. Well, there's no insulation in this wall, all right? This is right by the fireplace in the living room. And when you go upstairs and flush both toilets at the same time, and you, and you tell everybody, be quiet, here's what it sounds like. I mean, you hear nothing. I mean, it's amazing. So um, I actually, it's really interesting. I think I may have talked about it last week briefly on the live stream, but I had a woman from Washington, D.C. who had bought a condo and she was just miserable because every 15 minutes she hears Niagara Falls in her wall because she's in the lower unit and everybody above her that flushes the toilet is right in her wall and it's just horrible. And so she was asking me, what if anything could be done? And I, I had good news for her. I said, well, all you have to do is um, open up the wall and, and take out that section of the PVC and put in cast iron. So I don't know what she's going to do. Um, I wouldn't want to necessarily be the plumber on that job because even though you tell the people, look, even though you tape the 
the toilet covers down, they lift them up and they still, I mean, it's, I've, <laughs> you can imagine what happens if you cut open a stack and you tell people don't flush the toilet. You know, if, if they flush it, it, bad things happen. All right. So anyway, um, so anyway, if you've got questions about anything with your home, now's the time to ask. Just type it in the comments section, uh, the chat section, and I'm happy to answer it. Uh, it doesn't matter what, what question you ask. Just don't do what Lenin's doing. <laughs> we're not talking politics here. Uh, we're not talking religion. We're not doing any of that. Uh, you can go do that on other websites <laughs> and other people that, that specialize in that stuff. Um, okay. The uh, I want to tell you just a really quick thing. So about 10 or 15 minutes before I went live, I kind of glance out the window here. My window's right here. And I see this white stuff in the air. And I go, well, that's crazy. There aren't any active volcanoes around here. You know, the, the ash would be falling from the sky. And um, it wasn't ash. It was the first uh, snow flurries of the season. So the old man's dandruff, he, was, he must have been scratched his head like this, and some dandruff came out. And um, anyway, it's going to start snowing here soon in New Hampshire. So, But I've got great snow blowers, and uh, we can handle it. Okay, well, um, okay, burn. Okay, is it okay to burn some pine cones in my wood stove? Um, well, you can do it. Um, it's going to make a lot of creosote. You know, all those softwoods, if you talk to any chimney sweep, you know, they'll tell you that the softwoods are just horrible. You know, they, they, um, they just, they, they cause a lot of problems in the inside of chimneys and, and flue liners. So you'll just be, um, you'll just be cleaning your chimney more often. And if you don't keep up with it, um, you could have a devastating chimney fire. So if you've never seen a chimney fire before, I, re I highly recommend going to YouTube and watch a couple of videos. Uh, they're terrifying and they can completely burn your whole house down. I mean, you're talking about a blowtorch uh, that can happen. So you have to actually mentally get prepared as to how you would deal with a chimney fire. And, um, uh, you know, you have to cut off the supply of oxygen to it. So you got to figure out how am I going to do that? And there's also some products that you can throw into the fire that, 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 extinguish the chimney fire. So you might want to buy some of that just to have on hand. Um, okay. How cold is it here um, in, in New Hampshire today? Uh, it was, I, it maybe got to 44 Fahrenheit. Um, I'm not really good at converting that to centigrade. I would say since zero is 32, um, I'm going to say four or five degrees centigrade, maybe just, just a guess. Um, but uh, cold here, in other words, to me, cold is single digits uh, Fahrenheit, you know, or below zero. That's when it really gets cold. So, and and we can get that kind of cold here in New Hampshire. It happens all the time. So, um, anyway, any kind of questions you have about your home, now's the time to ask them. Um, I'm happy to, to answer them for you and um, try to save you some time, try to save you some money. And I, I want to tell you, hey, I'll share a little story. Well, I'm waiting for the next question. One, of, I, you may not know this, so I'm I've been a licensed master plumber uh, since 1981. I've always liked doing plumbing. I'm a master carpenter as well, um, so I always did all the carpentry and plumbing on my jobs. So, anyway, I one of the things I always loved doing was drawing uh, these isometric three dimensional drawings that show all the drain pipes and the vent pipes. And you would have to draw one of these drawings to get a plumbing permit. And the reason the plumbing department wants to see those drawings is because they want to make sure that you as the plumber, or if it's you as a homeowner that are applying for the permit, that you understand what size pipes have to run to each fixture, all right? Because different size pipes by code have to go to different fixtures. And then they want to understand that you, you are totally crystal clear on how to vent each fixture and what size vent pipes have to be used. And same thing, um, you have to vent it a certain way and, and you have to use a certain size pipe. And it's and if you're not a plumber, um, I don't even see how you could begin to, to do one of these drawings the right way. So I'm one of the few people in the United States that actually draw these things for people. And it's kind of a neat little fun business and it's growing. And I, 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 I've really come a long way and I, I drum on a computer they're all in color. All the different pipe sizes are color-coded. They're beautiful drawings. You can actually go 
download a sample one for free if you want, if you're interested. So just go to shop.askthebuilder.com. So shop.askthebuilder.com. You'll see on the left-hand column, draw plumbing plans. I don't know, pick pick any of the like two bed, two bathroom home, four bathroom home. It doesn't matter because in the SKU, there's a link to download a sample of, of what the drawings look like. All right. So um, great. Uh, are most homes in the U.S. made of wood? Yes. The, uh, I'll get back to the plumbing thing. So Lennon's asking, are most homes in the U.S. made of wood? Yes, we almost frame, frame all homes in the United States exclusively out of wood because we have we have so much lumber, although the U.S. government doesn't necessarily let us cut our own lumber. But the timber companies uh, like Weyerhaeuser, Georgia Pacific, uh, some of these huge, huge lumber companies, they own millions and millions of acres of land. They, they can cut on their own land. We also get some imported lumber from Canada. Uh, but, but wood is the primary thing we use to build all of our floors, our walls, and our roofs. And I know... You in England and the UK, you guys ran out of wood a long time ago. So you build mostly with masonry. All right. So anyway, one of the luxuries I get as I do these plumbing plans is people have to then send me their, their floor plans and, you know, the PDF copy of the floor plans because I need to see where the fixtures are, what's in each bathroom, how they're located, blah, 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 so that I can draw the drawing accurately. Well, <laughs> one of the, like the last two jobs I've drawn I'm scratching my head looking at these plans and I'm going, this one that I drew, it's a house that's going to be built in Indiana. I go, where in the world is the mechanical room? I mean, where are they going to put the furnace? You know, I, I mean, it was crazy. They, it, it, they didn't show it on the plan. I, I, I thought someone's going to be in for a big surprise. And then today I'm drawing this, this plumbing plan for a gentleman who's building a really nice uh, three bathroom house. It's kind of like a, almost like a log cabin, but it's not a log cabin uh, out in Idaho. And I'm looking at this floor plan and I go, where is the half bath? It's basically, it's everything on one floor. There's like a master bedroom suite. There's two bedrooms that share a full bathroom. And, but there's no half bath where, you know, like if you have guests come over, now they're going to have to go into the bathroom of one of the bedrooms. I mean, that's crazy. So, so especially, what if I told you, I was talking to somebody about it this morning. I had, I, I also did a, a, a phone consult. You know, I do these phone consults if you don't know that. So in other words, if you get in trouble and you need to talk to me on the phone, I, you can buy 15 minute chunks of time for me. All right. So I'm talking to this guy about it and I, and I tell him, I go, I'll never forget the second house that I bought. It was built in the uh, early 1900s in Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, it did not have a first floor bathroom. Uh, that was very uncommon. In fact, it was a four, it was a six bedroom house. Get this, a six bedroom house. There were four bedrooms on the second floor and there were two large rooms on the third floor and there was one bathroom in this house. All right, that was very common back then. All right, back in the early 1900s. So there was a closet on the first floor. Um, well, I'm going to get with you in just a second. Uh, there was a closet on the first floor, right there by the kitchen. It was a really perfectly located spot. It was right next to the stairwell that went down to the basement. And the closet was no more than 30, 32 inches wide and no more than four feet deep. All right. And part of it had a, a little bit of a slope ceiling. All right. But it was tall enough that you could walk back into the closet and not hit your head. So I was able to fit a toilet back, you know, deep into the closet and uh, then I was able to get a very small wall-mounted uh, hand wash sink. So there was no vanity, just a simple little, I think the sink was only 12 inches out, maybe maybe 16 inches wide. I don't know. It was very small. And it worked perfectly. It was wonderful. And so in other words, the point is, are you telling me that the planner could not figure out a way to carve out a space 32 inches wide by four feet long? To have a half bathroom. All right. So I, I'm just stunned by all the mistakes I'm seeing on these plans is all I can tell you. All right. Remember, if you've got a question or comment, now's the time to put it in. Let's go look at them. Um, all right. Uh, Will's got a question. We had some snowflakes here in the mid coast, Maine, a few hours ago, but it's not sticking at 40 degrees. Yeah, it's going to drop down. We know that. Um, 
Okay, how LV teach me? How long was the plumbing trade program that you attended? How long practicing trade before you took the license exam? How long did it take to become a master plumber? Okay, great questions. Um, I did not go to a trade school. Uh, I was all self-taught. Uh, back in my day uh, in Hamilton County, Cincinnati, for you to be able to get a plumbing permit, to pull a permit on a job, all you had to do was post a $3,000 bond. And that $3,000 bond for a year only cost $75. <laughs> all right, so think about that. I... At the age 24, which is when I pulled my first plumbing permit, and I didn't know hardly anything about plumbing, I could have pulled a permit to pipe in a 50-foot tall, I'm sorry, a 50-story skyscraper. They wouldn't have stopped me. I mean, it, it, the job would be all messed up back then because I didn't know what I was doing. But I'm just trying to tell you, um, you would be surprised in different parts of the United States it's not as hard to, to, to do. Now, um, how long before practice? So I started practicing the trade right away. I, I was putting in plumbing. You know, I was doing small jobs and I was reading books about it. You know, that was back in the day before the internet. So I would go to the library and get all these books, read all these. I can't remember how many books I read about plumbing, but a lot, all right? And then you would just look as you, as you rehabbed houses and you open up a wall, you would see how the old plumbers put it in. And if you had any critical thinking skills whatsoever, you could figure it out. And what the, the biggest problem that most people have, the average person is they don't understand the venting uh, and, and, and they don't and they and they don't understand the importance of the venting because they didn't pay attention to physics in high school. All right. So it's very complex. Um, you can make a lot of mistakes if you don't know what you're doing and your plumbing system will not work. Uh, so how long before I took the license exam? Okay, well I I became a master plumber in 1981, so I had only been practicing for about seven or eight years. And it's a kind of a long story, but I had another master plumber friend who lived near me, who saw my work, knew I was a really good plumber. And he happened to be friends, very close friends. Like he was as close friends to the head of the Cincinnati plumbing department as 19 is to 20. All right. So he called up the, his buddy and said, hey, this guy, you should let this guy take and sit for the exam. And you're allowed to do that. If the, if the head of the plumbing department, uh, you know, get this, mechanical engineers can be master plumbers and have never installed a pipe in their life. There are many, many mechanical engineers out there who are master plumbers and they've sat for the exam, but they have never installed plumbing. All right. So the code allows that. So that was why... I was allowed to sit for the exam in Cincinnati because even though I had not gone through the apprentice and journeyman program in Cincinnati, so it's kind of a little loophole, but um, I passed the exam flying colors. In fact, the plumbing inspector called me two days after the exam and said that I had scored the highest on the venting diagram. And it was a very, very complex diagram you had to do. You had to vent all these fixtures. It's very complex. I have to draw it for you. But um, he said no one had ever gotten the, as high a score as I did. So I'm, I don't mean to brag, but I just something I'd love to do, which is why I'm now drawing these plumbing isometric drawings. All right. So because I like doing it. It's really fun. It's easy. It's almost like diagramming sentences. If you're old enough like me, you remember when you went to grade school, you had to diagram sentences to learn uh, grammar and to learn how to form sentences and how, how it all works. All right. So um, anyway, uh, so I hope that answers your question. Um, yeah, it is interesting. It was interesting. And I love doing it. Like I loved putting the plumbing in my daughter's home. All right. Will, could I install radiant heat for an unheated upstairs bedroom? It now has carpeting over plywood floor. And should I upgrade to 200 amp? Uh, so uh, two separate questions. Uh, the answer is yes. You can install radiant heat for your unheated upstairs bedroom. Um, I, I mean, if you're going to put it under the floor like I did in my daughter's house, you're you're going to tear out the ceilings, which is insanity. All right. So, so my this this actually kind of goes right back to what we talked about at the open of the live stream. So, when you start to think of all that money that you would spend to in, to install this radiant heating for that upstairs bedroom. You could go right now to a big box store and spend $80. All 
and walk out with an electric little portable space heater. It looks just like they're, they're oil filled and they, they look just like an old fashioned radiator. And let me tell you, they work really well. All right. So it's radiant heat. So if, and, and remember, you're, you're going to spend pretty close. You'd have to do the math to see what do you spend per kilowatt hour for electricity versus what you would spend for natural gas or however you're going to heat the water for your radiant heat. I mean, you're, you're splitting hairs for like just producing enough heat for this bedroom. All right. I mean, one heater, one heater is probably going to run her out of the bedroom or, you know, uh, I don't know who I, I thought you maybe said your daughter. So I would just go get an $80 radiant heater and plug it in. All right. Um, you know, you got to make sure that the electric in the wall is strong enough is, is the right uh, gauge wire so you don't cause an electrical fire. I've got columns on the website about that. Go read the actually go go back to the website, Will, and read. Just type in dimmer switch into my Ask the Builder website and wait till you see those two photos. Dimmer switch. Type that in. If that doesn't put your head on a swivel, nothing will. All right. 200 amp service. Yeah. 200 amp service is really the standard here in the United States for electric service for home. So yes, it's a good idea to have it. Um, yeah, so you have one of those heaters now. Okay, well, if it's not doing the job, then you need a second one, you know? I mean, so I'm just trying to tell you, do the math. In other words, what are you gonna spend to put a radiant system in 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 this bed, under this bedroom? I mean, are you gonna spend $2,000 on materials? Uh, 3000 I mean, are, do you have to buy a new boiler? Are you going to buy a separate water heater to supply the hot water? Um, you could be at two and $3,000 before you know it. Well, my goodness, you could buy another flipping $80 heater and, and you'll only spend an extra, you couldn't spend an extra $50 a year in fuel cost using electricity versus using natural gas or propane to heat the hot water for the radiant system. See what I'm saying? In other words, you'll be so much money ahead. And then we're not even talking about putting all the drywall back up and painting all the ceilings again. It's crazy, all right? So <laughs> I just have to think it through. All right. Um, yeah, those heaters do work extremely well. You bet they work well. Uh, how's calculating paybacks going so far? It went really well. We covered it the first 15 minutes of the live stream. I'm already done. If you weren't here for that part of the live stream, once the live stream is done, Google processes it and magic happens. And Louise, you can you can come back and watch the, the live stream to see what I had to say. I, I had these really fancy slides. It was, it was a lot of fun. All right. So, um, <laughs> okay, Tim, uncle, uncle. <laughs> I know. I win. I win. I know. I love it. I love it. But it's true. You just, you know, people get stuck in their head. I, I want to do this, man. This is the way to go. Well, you know what? Uh, maybe it is the way to go if you have unlimited money and you don't care about mess and you just you you want your house to be a, a laboratory and, and, you, and you you just want to tear it up. Uh, go ahead, you know. But always just think, what is the goal? What's the problem I'm trying to solve? All right, the problem you're trying to solve is the bedroom is cold. Actually, the first thing you ought to do is whoever goes in that bedroom, just tell them to put more clothes on. All right, just wear more clothes. Uh, put an extra blanket on the bed at night. Maybe just get an electric blanket if that's all you need. Because most of the time, probably nobody's in the bedroom. You know, they either go to work or they're at school or they're downstairs watching TV. Maybe you solve the problem with a stupid electric blanket, you know, for 49 bucks. I mean, you know, so just solve the problem. All right. All right. So uh, don't make it harder than it has to be. Um, <laughs> LOL. Exactly. Uh, all right. I, I have to tell you that. Um, the reason I'm doing these live streams is because, you know, 10 days ago, my son, you know, got me back into it. I, I tried to do it two years ago and it just wasn't, it, there wasn't any traction. It wasn't, it wasn't that good. And that, and the, and the technology that YouTube had was really pretty clunky. And so my son told me, he said, the best part, dad, is that you get to interact with your viewers. And he's so right. I, um, I had a great time uh, interacting with you. And answering your questions, it's a lot of fun. It's just like we're all, uh, it's just that you get to see me, I can't see you, and that's okay. It's almost like we're we're just, you know, at a, at a picnic and and we're around a big table talking with one another. It's really pretty pretty cool. Um, sweater bed, yes, exactly. Sweater, bed, jacket, comforter, exactly. 
just, you know, just when you have a problem, um, no matter what the problem is, just stop, take a deep breath and try to list all of the solutions because there's generally more than one solution to a problem. And um, instead of just going, oh, there's only one way to solve it. No, there could be multiple ways. And that's what the pros do. They just sit back, analyze it, the, and then uh, go with the, what makes the most sense. Simple as that. All right. If you uh, have a question, now's the time to ask it. Um, anything about your home, I'll do my best to answer it. And um, uh, we'll see if I can't save you some money and some time. All right. Uh, Will is back again. He's got some ice built up in the Anderson crank open kitchen windows when it gets below freezing. Of taping the outside of the window. No, that's not going to help you. Uh, that's not what the problem is. All right. So you need to, Will, you need to go back to askthebuilder.com and you need to type condensation into my search engine and you need to read all of my columns about condensation. I could sit here and talk for an hour and there's no need for me to do that. I want you to go back to the website and and one of the big things you said is that you're in the kitchen. All right. So I already know what's going on in the kitchen. Uh, you know, people are, are cooking, they're boiling pots of water. They're, they're, you know, when you cook anything, you release water vapor. Um, you might be running hot water in the sink. Um, and then you have to understand, once again, <laughs> what I'm really finding out, it's really kind of interesting. And, and don't take this the wrong way. All right. Don't, I don't want you to take this the wrong way. I, 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 I've discovered in all the years that I've done Ask the Builder is that a lot of people did not pay attention in high school physics class, all right? They did not pay attention or they were sick or they skipped school. I don't know what the reason is, but a lot, you know, the, the, those, uh, do you remember back when you were in school? Cause I kind of remember this, um, you know, you would, you'd be gritching, you'd be moaning and, and you'd be going, ah, I don't understand why we have to learn this. We're never going to use this. We're, ne we're, we're never going to, you know, and you, and you don't have enough life experience and the teacher you know, depending on how old he or she is, they realize that, yeah, you are going to use this. But but sometimes they couldn't explain it to you how. They couldn't give you examples. Well, let me tell you, just about everything in physics that, you, that was taught in physics in high school and college, you use every day. <laughs> or you can use it to solve problems. All right. So, um, and condensation is a great example. So condensation is a fantastic example. So, Will, yeah. Well, you know, well, yeah. It's not so much too much humidity, but so will. So I'm just going to, this is a rhetorical question. So you get a cold can of soda or a cold can of beer or a bottle of beer out of the refrigerator in the summertime. You go out onto your deck, you sit under an umbrella, you set the can or the bottle on the table and you look out, you're chatting with your friends. And three minutes later, <clears throat> the outside of the bottle is covered with water. All right. What's going on? <clears throat> Why is that happening? All right. Well, you know, it's not cold outside. It's not cold outside, dude. It's 90 degrees. All right. So um, that's what's happening to your kitchen windows. So. Um, all right. <clears throat> Algebra was a mystery to me. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, yeah, I know. I know somebody else that suffered in algebra. I, you know what? I just barely made it. I mean, barely by the skin of my teeth. Um, but. What I've discovered about mathematics in school uh, was, um, so you have to understand that mathematics is just a language. It's like learning French or German or Latin. Um, and if it, 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 your brain has to work a completely different way to understand those mathematical formulas. And some teachers are really good at it. Uh, I had a, a college professor who was just amazing. And, and in uh, my senior year, this is a true story. This is going to be hard for you. to. So I needed to take certain math courses to graduate with my geology degree. And one of them was calculus. In my senior year, my last quarter of my senior year. So think about this spring quarter. You're this close to being done with all of your education. And, and I had to take this class. And the only time I could take the class because of conflicts with other ones was it was a calculus class Monday, Wednesday, Friday from four in the afternoon until five o'clock. <laughs> Think about this. A senior in college on a Friday afternoon 
I mean, really, any afternoon, you wanted to be at school? Are you kidding me? But this, this grad student was the teacher. And by the second class, I love this guy. I mean, he, it's like he had this gift of being able to explain calculus, which is very complex. If you know, if you, a lot of people struggle with calculus, but I'm telling you what, I got an A in the course. And I was the, I mean, I never skipped a class. I, I actually look forward to going to this calculus class. All right. It's crazy as it sounds. And so, and by Friday, um, I mean, on Monday, there would maybe be 15 people in the classroom. On Friday afternoons, there were like two or three of us. <laughs> so it was just, you know, no one wanted to be in school on a Friday afternoon. All right. So um, I've got so many stories. Oh, my gosh. Don't get me started on Skyline Chili. I'm sure one day we're going to talk about that. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Algebra is an adult. I actually was thinking about, so what I do uh, I'm kind of going to go off on a little side tangent here. So um, let me, I'll actually give you a demonstration, although you can't see it. Um, so some people maybe do algebra, you know, as you get older to kind of keep your brain active. You might do problems, solve problems. Um, I decided about four or five years ago to, um, you know, to, um, to learn Morse code, which is another language. So um so let me, um, I'm going to send, um, how, we'll do Will. We'll do Will's name. So Will, if you're still here, I'm going to do your name in Morse code. And anybody who wants their name done in Morse code, just type it right now. We'll have a little fun, all right? So what a crazy thing to do on a live stream. So here's here's Will Smith's name in Morse code. Let me get this out of the way. I'm going to turn it up a little louder so you can hear it. So that's Will Smith. All right. So <laughs> LaShonda B. West. Are you kidding me? All right. That's it. That's awesome. All right. So let's do, let's do that name. So that's pretty long. So hang on. I'll get to everybody. So he, I'm hoping, let me know. Can you hear that by the way? Are you able to hear what I'm doing? Can somebody type yes or no? Can somebody type yes or no? Can you hear this? Okay, great. All right, good. All right. So here is uh, LaShonda. So we'll do LaShonda first, and then I'll stop. That's LaShonda. Here's V. Here's West. All right, so here's Andrew. So uh, pretty much fun, huh? So that's, that's what I do to kind of keep my um, brain active, because you have to you know, you have to, um, you know, you have to interpret it. All right. So anyway, um, that's probably enough for today. I don't see any more questions about houses. Uh, oh, here we go. Will. I uh, know the train is not running. Uh, the train stopped running. He's Will's talking about the scenic train here in New Hampshire, um, down in Meredith. And it probably ran, um, Oh, they stopped running about the middle of October because you know, they have all the, leaf, we call them leaf peepers. All the tourists come up here to see all the vibrant, beautiful trees. And, um, you know, once we, we had a late season, I mean, the, the trees had a lot of color all the way through the end of October. And um, so, but but they shut the train down second, third week of October. It, it was it was over with. So, um, uh, and same thing with the fall foliage trains. They have a special that operates on the weekends for about five weekends that uh, it's a very, it's, I think it's $75, $80 a ticket, but it's about a six hour train ride. Well, let's see, not six hours, 11, it leaves at 11, uh, gets back at four. So it's a five hour train ride. The train leaves Meredith, New Hampshire. It goes all the way up to Plymouth, New Hampshire. You get off the train in Plymouth. You eat lunch at the common man restaurant. Uh, then the train comes back. It stops in Ashland because there's a historic restored train station in Ashland. And I would play the telegrapher there. I would dress up in a costume. I mean, in real gear, you know, socks, sleeve socks, you know, bow tie, the visor. And I'd be sending Morse code, you know, in the train station, sitting at the telegrapher's desk, a super honor. So that was a five hour train ride. And um, so that one ended um, the, the week, not Halloween, the weekend before Halloween. So anyway, fun times.
fun times on the train. I kind of miss it. Um, how long, Andrew's got a question. Uh, that's pretty great. How long did it take to learn Morse code? So that's a really great question. Um, you can learn Morse code uh, in, you can become somewhat proficient in just two months. Uh, you you could easily be at 13 words a minute in two months if you stick, if you just put a half an hour in a day. You can go online. There's a, there's a website called CW. So C, the letter C, the letter W, and that stands for continuous wave because that's what Morse is. So um, I don't have my straight key set, set up. If I have, so, so in other words, when you send the, 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 my radio is actually putting in all the dashes. Listen to this. So it's putting in those breaks, da, 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 da. So if you, if, if the radio didn't do that, if I just held down my straight key, it would sound like this, like, Da. So that's a continuous wave. All right. So when you interrupt the continuous wave uh, in, a, in a particular way, you can create letters. All right. So, for example, like the letter C is da, 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 da. So long, short, long, short. So anyway, go to CWAcademy.com. CWAcademy.com. That's probably the best way to learn Morse code quickly. All right, so there are quite a few different websites out there. Here's the one thing you do not want to do. Do not, do not learn it the Boy Scout way. So the Boy Scout way is where they actually put on paper, you know, dot dash, and then you go, that's the letter A. No, that do not, that do not ever do that. So Morse code is auditory. You, you don't, in other words, blind people can do Morse code, all right? Um, when you learn to talk as a child, your mom and dad did not do this. Here's what they didn't do. I'm having fun here. All right. I know this. One. What, what a crazy way to do live streaming. Here's what they didn't do. They didn't do this. They didn't hold up a piece of paper that said cat, cat, C, A, T. And they pointed to the cat on the floor. They did not do that. They just pointed to the cat and said, that's a cat. And after you hear it enough times, you go cat. Oh, the cat's that furry thing with four legs and a tail. All right. So that's how you learn Morris. You just listen to it, all right? And there's a very specific way uh, to learn Morris. Um, you don't want to learn it slow. You actually want to learn it at this speed. You want to learn the letters at this speed. Like here's here's the letter A. I'll do the, I'll do the first part of the alphabet. Here's A. Here's B. Here's C. Here's D. Here's E. Here's F. Here's G. Here's a, B, C, D, F, G, H. Here's H. Here's I. Here's J. So you get the point. In other words, they're all different. All right. So you just want to learn by hearing. Close your eyes and listen, just like when people talk, because you can actually close your eyes when someone's talking to you and you completely understand what they're saying. All right. Morse is the same way. All right. I could talk about it for hours. I love it. Uh, go to my, go to my, I, I have a radio blog. I've never talked about it here. Just go to my blog and read all my stories. W, so the letter W, here, actually here, it's right here. So go here. W3ATB.com. W3ATB.com. Hundreds and hundreds of stories there about Morse code, about outdoor radio. You'll have a blast at that website. Um, all right. I hope you're still having fun. We've got a lot. We got quite a few people here. I'd like to have more. So that's you could help me, by the way. If you can spread the word about the live stream, you know, through any of your social media, it sure would help. So do your do me a favor, and you know, I'm trying to help you. So try to reciprocate and try to help me by getting the word out there about this live stream. All right, uh, it's impressive. Yeah, it is impressive. It's it's fun. It's fun to be doing radio outside, and people walk up to you and go, "What what's that? Is that Morse code?" Yes, it is. I didn't know people still did it. Yeah, millions of us still do it, all right? <laughs> it's very popular. There's millions and millions of people around the world doing Morse code. Um, <clears throat> actually, I could, um, if you're interested, I, 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 this is turning around. Oh, that, that band's dead. I was trying to find a, a, somebody doing it. Here we go. Yeah, that's somebody doing digital. So that's, oh, by the way, so with respect to ham radio, I'll just say this very quickly. Um, you can do ham radio talking in a microphone, just like I'm talking here. 
you can do Morse code. You can also do digital. So if you're if you love computers, look into digital ham radio. Just type that into Google. Oh my gosh, it's you can just you can just talk to people using your computer. It's very cool. All right, so. Um, uh, no, I, I never got to do the Polar Express. Uh, they're running the Polar Express, but I, I didn't. I never did it because it, that train goes out of Lincoln, and it's an hour drive from my house to get up to Lincoln. And it's like they pay so little. It just it's stupid. It's like you know, it wasn't worth my time to do the Polar Express. Um, how deep is the frost line in New Hampshire? Forty-two inches. Well, it depends. So the southern part of the state down near Massachusetts probably 36 inches. Uh, you go up to Pittsburgh, which is up near Canada, uh, close to five feet. All right. It gets really cold up, up at the upper part of the state and it stays cold. So probably five feet up there. So it, it just depends where you're at. Um, you'll check it out. Never knew how it worked. Thanks for the tips. You're a good teacher. Thank you, Andrew. Um, thank you. I had a lot of people tell me that. Um, uh, and you might, if everything goes well, like I think it's going to go, I can't tell you anymore. I know I'm teasing you. Uh, you might see a lot of really cool teaching stuff coming up. Um, really cool stuff. So anyway, uh, I'm going to pack it in. We've been on for almost an hour. This is the longest live stream I've done so far, 56 minutes. So I want to thank you for being here today. And thanks for your great questions. Uh, really enjoy it. Really enjoy, uh, you know, you... You you might be one of the regulars, and I really uh, I'm I'm building this relationship with you. So thanks so much, and thanks for your patience. I'm I know I'm not the best at this. Uh, I'm getting I'm trying to get better. I make mistakes. Um, I'm human. Blah blah blah. But uh, if as long as you're patient with me, uh, we're we're gonna have a lot of fun together. Um, yes. So you're you're very welcome, Andrew. You're and Will very welcome. So. I'm going to pack it in, uh, go get something to drink. I'm a little dry. I should have had, uh, uh, no worry about the politics, Lennon. I, it's okay. I mean, I'm happy to talk with you privately about it. I'm just not going to do it in an open forum here. I'm not going to, not going to go there. It's because it's too, here in the United States, I don't know how it is in the UK with you, but here in the United States right now, uh, it's really bad. I mean, I, all I'm going to say is that uh, many people here in the United States are at war. It's, it's a winner-take-all mentality. It's horrible. It's horrible. I don't like it. I don't like what's going on on a personal level. And, and as soon as you try to talk to somebody, then they get angry. I mean, it's like you start fighting. It's like that's not – that's I mean, that's why our parents told us a long time ago, don't talk about politics or religion. So they're right. Um, anyway, so – but if you want to talk about it privately, um, we can have a private conversation about it. Okay. Thanks so much for tuning in. I really appreciate you being here and I will be back here tomorrow. It's just going to be an open mic day. Ask anything. So get your questions ready and do me a favor and try to get the word out to your friends. Uh, you know what, if you're using Facebook, um, share the link. I mean, you know how to do that. Like share the link on Facebook, uh, you know, once we go live so that your friends see it, maybe they'll join in. Um, just do whatever you can to help me get more traction on this live stream. I mean, wouldn't it be cool? I don't know about you. I, I can see on my screen, I don't know if you can see it, but I can see how many people are active and watching. So I, I can't wait to the day we get to 100. Then I can't wait to the day we get to 500. Then I can't wait to the day we get to 1,000. So, but I need your help doing it. So please just spread the word as best you can. Um, all right. <laughs> You're getting to the stage where I don't care. I know. I so just, you know, this is the last thing I'll say about the whole politics thing. So I, I've discovered it's a, it's kind of a long story. Maybe I'll, I'll do a, uh, I'll talk about this on another live stream, but I discovered about five years ago how to really be happy. All right. And it's kind of a long story how it happened. And uh, it was actually taught to me indirectly by my Morse code mentor here in New Hampshire. And anyway, the bottom line to happiness is anything that's negative in your day, I don't care what it is, you have to actively turn away from it and push it out of your life. All right. And and so like for me, like Facebook, like if you, I, you know, I was, I don't want to say I was a Facebook addict, but I checked in every morning and I would look at posts from some of my friends that would make my blood boil. Well, that's no way to start the day. 
I mean, that's crazy. I'm seriously, it's like your blood pressure rising in the morning. So just stop using Facebook. So that's what I did. Um, I would I, I would go to some meetings. I was actually president of the local ham radio club. <laughs> and I would go to the meeting happy and I would come home angry. <laughs> like, yeah. so, so I resigned and I stopped going to meetings. So in other words, I started actively pushing like over the cliff. Anything that made me unhappy, I pushed it out of my life. And dude, I have never been happier in my life. I'm just telling you. So it's really that simple to get to happiness, right? Just, that's all you got to do. All right. I will be back here tomorrow, the good Lord willing, as long as I wake up in the morning, right? You too. So thanks so much for tuning in. I'll be back here tomorrow, four o'clock Eastern. Uh, we'll have some fun again. And thanks again. Once again, do whatever you can to try to spread the word about the live stream. I would really, really appreciate it. Thanks so very much. Um, yeah. New, retired. Yeah. Build all the year. Yep. Oh, so go, uh, Will, go to my website, read my column about my two days on the USS George Washington. And I flew for an hour with the number seven Blue Angels pilot. So type in aircraft carrier in my search engine, type in Blue Angels, read those stories. Go Navy. Uh, and I just, um, just a month ago, I was on the USS New Jersey uh, for about three hours down in Camden, New Jersey. Wow, that was amazing. So um, Twitter, yeah. Uh, no, I'm not doing Twitter. Not doing that. No, 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 no. No Twitter, no Facebook. Um, yeah, good. Well, type in the blue, type in Blue Angels and read the story about me uh, up there with a the number seven pilot. Uh, you can actually see right above my head. That's the uh, photo they gave me. You can't see the whole thing, but that's I'll maybe tip up my thing. So that's the uh, uh, photo, the commemorative photo they gave me uh, with all of the people who were on the team uh, the, the day that I flew. So uh, it kicked my butt. Uh, if you've never been in an FA-18, <laughs> I think that we pulled them. It's in the story. I, I think the maximum Gs we pulled were 7.2. They're not, they're told by the maintenance people, they're not allowed to pull more than eight Gs. There's a, there's a meter in the plane. If the plane pulls, it keeps track of the, the Gs it, 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 it goes through. And if it goes over eight, the pilots get in big trouble because they then have to kind of inspect the plane for damage. It's very costly. It takes a lot of time. So we made it to 7.2. And it I, I think I passed out seven or eight times. I don't know. Just It's horrible. <laughs> it's horrible. Uh, all right. So you service flight simulator in the Navy. Okay. Good for you. Thank you for your service, by the way. I really appreciate it. Go read. If you haven't read the story about my dad in World War II, it's on the website. Just type in Melvin, M-E-L-V-I-N. He got the, my dad got the bronze star. So I'm pretty proud of him. Um, all right. Good for you, Lennon. Uh, US, U.S. Cursar in the Mediterranean. Good for you. Thanks for your service, too, if you're in the service. Um, uh, very, very, um, I have so much, such respect for everyone in service. I, my draft number in, in high school uh, was 127, and they drafted to 125. Um, if you ever watched the movie Saving Private Ryan, that's kind of who I was. Another, I was a sole surviving son in my family. So had I been drafted, uh, I they were supposed to not put me in a um, at the front lines or in an active situation uh, because if I got killed, then the family name would die. So anyway, um, thanks everybody. Uh, we could talk forever, couldn't we? <laughs> so retired corporal, U.S. Army, good for you, Army, awesome. Um, I had so many great veterans. I have nothing but respect for all the veterans. Thank you so much for you know. I mean, it's why I'm allowed to do this live stream. All right. Isn't that crazy? Do you realize there are some many people across the world that can't do what I'm doing and what you're doing? They could never type those comments. And it's all because of the people like you who sacrificed and 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 served time in the military. I, I'll forever be indebted to you. So thanks very much. Okay, I'll be back tomorrow. I had a great time. Uh, good night to you guys. And yeah, good night, Lennon. Um, very late there. My goodness, very late in the UK. So um, thanks so much for tuning in today. Hour and four minutes. It's a record. I really appreciate it. Once again, do everything you can to spread the word about the live stream. I'll be here tomorrow. Bye-bye.